I got a stupid layer. Today I got a killer game in the Gajamata for you. Before we jump into it, though, we're going to try something a little bit different. going to go over the basics of the map, Fault Line. Uh, this map kind of mismatched. Uh, the North has a lot of advantages over the South. I'm going to explain to you how it normally plays out, though. Here's Capture the Base mode. Uh, here you can see the spawn points uh, for the South team. North team, you got to spawn roughly here, roughly here, and roughly here. Now, how the game's designed to be played as evidenced by the way the domination mode map lays out is the developers want there to be a fight in this column. Uh, they want this position to fight this column in the center here, and then this position to fight over here. But what happens in our game 99% of the time is uh, anywhere, the majority of these, if not all of them, usually go over here. Now note this is a one, two uh, square distance traveled to get over here. That's roughly two to three minutes usually. And uh, basically that leaves this three versus six here. Assuming these guys don't go over here and take themselves out of the fight, which is an error. If they just move forward two squares here themselves, uh, by the time these guys can no longer cover, now they have a six on three. Uh, they should win this. And then from this position, we'll just go from their starting spawns. One, two, three, four, roughly four squares to get in the base. Uh, meanwhile, how far do we have to travel here? One, two, to once again join this fight, create the six on three, which these guys should be evenly trading up until this point. Uh, now they have the overload. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight squares of travel distance to go the usual attempted base capture route. Massive disadvantage. It's a very, very poor play. Unfortunately, it's probably the most common play in the game uh, for whatever reason. I think it's just because these guys spawn kind of pointed uh, roughly to the left here and they never figured it out. If you want to play this spot uh, successfully, depending on your ship, you can either deploy maybe one square here, maybe two over here up into this position. Or usually if I'm in a bigger tank, your ships, I'll just kind of pull forward here like a battleship and then shoot into this area. Um, or destroy, you can get in the middle, uh, attempt to put crossfire torps in that way. So that's basically how this map plays out once again. If these two uh, spawns fight down here and then push into the base, they should have a huge advantage over blue uh, in most cases. So that's how this map plays out here. We'll take a look at the game in just a moment. First, we'll take a look at the build here. You can see there's uh, Zen Bing and there's the ship build. We do have the tier seven currently unlocked. Just need a little bit more cash. Then we'll go ahead and jump into the tier seven ship here. Fault line capture the base mode like we previewed a moment ago. Uh, center spawn. And basically we're gonna see the usual deployments. Now, I'm gonna be critical of our own team's uh, movement in terms of what they're doing. That's not a very well played uh, fault line game from the blue team's perspective, but it's not criticizing the individual players. This is the most common strategies or very, very common positioning uh, that you see in this game. So basically, like, take the uh, eastern flank, for instance. Our destroyer is going to go all the way up the channel. And why are these flanks uh, so not valuable on this map? Okay, we got the center lake area, which is what I call it, the big ring in the middle. Uh, but look how we access that. Basically, on the east, there's these two giant islands. you got to go through a narrow point in between the two or go all the way around. And it's very easy to defend the uh, metal from that position. Likewise, on the west. Now, uh, in between where the uh, red northwest spawn uh, plays and their base, there's actually a shot into the middle here. If you're playing this center position over here, you do have to be cognizant of that uh, play at all times. But once again, uh, even if we manage to capture the west, projecting power into the middle... Of the base very difficult choke points abound okay so the normal strategy for capture the base mode in general but especially on this map is do whatever you're going to do to open and then we're going to have to go back and defend the base okay so we're going to see our team you see the two center spawns we talk about them going west that's typical play bad play uh, once again don't do that but they're going to go all the way around then they're going to follow the route i do believe i played this game a couple days ago uh, so we'll see if this pans out, but I believe they do win the side there, and then they attempt to make their way into the base. But of course, meanwhile, red is going to be flooding our base. Now we are going to be fighting tooth and nail uh, <laughs> to defend the base, and you're going to see it ends up being a pretty exciting match here. I think this is one of the more uh, well-played games that I've played recently, I believe. Once again, we'll see it uh, unfold as we go here. We're scouting the middle here, being aware. we got three destroyers. Uh, but you can see a lot of the red ships are deploying over to the uh, far east as well. Destroyers isolated. 
he's going to decide, okay, I'm going to rush into three, four ships over there. He's got the eagle cutting him off, and this is a precarious situation. Destroyers, a big part of destroyer play is who's got the better coverage from the teammates, okay? We don't have good coverage here at all. You'll note that, but we're not under an immediate threat here. If there's a lone destroyer that pops up, we got distance between us and the support ship. So I'm not too concerned about what's going on here. Now, here we make an unusual play uh, I, that I will choose to make once in a while, but it's not a play you should regularly set out to do. And that's we're going to go ahead and get on the base, okay? Now you can see on the west there we're having a good start. We got the uh, destroyer eliminated down there. And our overload is being achieved. Note the uh, game time. We're about three minutes, two and a half, three minutes, whatever it is, into the match. And finally, our overload, our strong side, is developed on the west. Uh, meanwhile, red being really slow, uh, pushing their advantage on the east. Okay, they would have been better just kind of charging in the middle of the lake and moving into our base. But you can see here, unopposed, there's no defenders over here. We're going to get on the base that will do a couple of things. Number one, it will begin to increase our score in the background by two points passively every five seconds. They don't get their two points while we have a ship on their cap. And this is basically like putting the red team in check. Okay, they have to respond to this. If they choose not to do so, then we'll go ahead and take the easy W. Not going to be a very good scoring game from our perspective if we just get on this base and uh, there's no challenge to it. But nevertheless, we'll take the W's uh, when we can get. Times are tough, and we got to do what we got to do. So, that said, that mentality, when you're this destroyer on the base, your first thought needs to be, okay, who's pushing me, and how quickly do I need to get away from them? Okay, we do not want to fall in the trap that a lot of destroyer players get into, where they get onto a cap, whether it's domination mode or especially capture the base, and they're saying, okay, I'm on here. I can't possibly get off now, because if I screw it up, well, we're in trouble. And look at what's going on down in the southwest, or the southeast, rather. We got destroyers coming around there, surrounding those ships, and that flank is in serious trouble here. But I'm already saying to myself, all right, we have nobody responsible for our base. And in fact, that red destroyer in the southeast would have been better just going straight, uh, mirroring our play, basically, going onto our base, forcing uh, the situation, uh, you know, forcing someone to reset them, rather. Uh, which, of course, will be me. Once you figure out how to play capture the base mode and you understand the importance of having a ship back to reset your base, which is usually of extreme paramount importance. It depends on the game situation, of course. But usually, uh, you need someone to do it. You're gonna Once you realize that, you're going to realize almost nobody that plays this game cares about that. Okay, They either don't understand how the game works or they just don't care. They like to go boom, boom with the big guns and shoot things. So we're already saying it on our mind here, okay... Uh, let's see if this North Carolina pushes in here. If we can manage to capture the base in the next minute, once again, we'll take the W, but that's becoming increasingly unlikely. We got a deterrent torp strike out there. Uh, he's heading into it, so we're not likely to get a kill shot unless he does something really uh, goofy. If he's forced to angle from some of the south, for instance, which of course he wouldn't be since there is no ships to his south. Uh, but he, he dodges the torps, and now he's got a clear shot. And in our mind, we're saying, is he going to get on the space in the next 42 seconds? If so, then get out of here, okay? Yes, we'll still manage to get a couple more points as he pushes us, but the closer he gets to us, the more in danger we are. Destroyers, you let either you intentionally get too close to these big ships, cruisers, battleships, or you let them get too close to us. The closer they get to you, the more accurate their shots are. The more accurate their shots are, the quicker they can kill you. Okay, and if you miss the torp strikes, which you're going to do 90% of the time, then they're going to kill you in those situations. So we're already saying, okay, well, we can't get the base now. We got to go. And we already are well aware of the situation. We're watching the map saying, wow, those destroyers kind of dropping the ball in the southeast. They should already be on our base. They'd probably win this game because it's going to take me a little while to get back there. Uh, but we visually confirm now that the base is being contested. We can no longer uh, capture that base. And again... We got on it, not necessarily with the mindset of, okay, we're going to capture this base. We're saying to ourselves, maybe we'll capture it. If so, we're lucky. But more importantly, we're forcing them to, we're dictating the pace of play to them. They're forced to respond to us. And by the way, we got a little bit of background score, which we're going to need because our team is losing the ship count. So we're going to go stay here trying to ambush this thing. Uh, the plane spotted us here. And now we're getting proxy spotted thinking to myself, where's this destroyer that's spotting us, not realizing it's the proxy spot immediately, that's a mental error. Uh, and the bigger error right now is we should already be back 
on our base, okay? Or we should be about one or two squares away from it because now they've slaughtered the eastern side, of course. They surrounded those guys and lassoed them up and killed them without any issues whatsoever, uh, which is to be expected, okay? Now, meanwhile, look at our guys, our brave boys from the middle. Uh, they came all the way through. They cleared out the west and the western spawn. Now they're going along that eight uh, square path. They're about to get into the base, uh, but... That doesn't matter if they're about to. If red gets one of their pieces on our base, which they will at any moment, uh, then we basically can't uh, capture their base. And they have defenders on the base that would uh, be able to reset as well. So obviously we're in some serious problem, or we're <laughs> encountering some serious trouble here. Uh, we got visual contact. Finally get out of range there. And we want to increase the distance a little bit between us and this North Carolina. Because once again, support ships matter in Destroyer v. Destroyer fights North Carolina very close to us. Uh, nobody can really shoot at this Icarus or whatever this uh, fellow the destroyer is over here, this red destroyer. Uh, so we're waiting for this North Carolina to get away from us. He doesn't like to be torped, of course, so he's going to get away from there once he realizes he couldn't catch us with our pants down. And there's the Icarus. We're going to go ahead and take a shot with the back gun. Center of the ship I thought was blocked, but now we're noting, okay, we're still continuing to be spotted. That means someone else, most likely the destroyer, or perhaps it was that North Carolina had a line of sight. But we always got to be paying attention to when are we getting spotted okay that's very very important information and the red team is still not on now they finally got on the base right there so it took them way longer once again i think if that uh destroyer that got around our ships would have gone directly to the base this game would probably be on the cutting room floor as a number another loss in the long list of losses that we've accrued here but we do manage to get the icarus we're going to slow down turn into them change our direction as briefly make sure we don't get any torps Coming in here, uh, you know, ending the uh, chances, because this is becoming a long shot chance. You can see how many blue ships can help us reset this base. None. Well, we got Naoba clearing or closing in on us. We killed one of the destroyers, but we know it's almost certainly another destroyer on the base. Or if it happens to be something else, cruiser or whatever else, something more deadly, well, then we could be in some serious trouble waiting for these torps to reload. Deep water torps can't hit destroyers, which is what I'm expecting to be around the corner, so we're going to leave them in the water for the Aoba. If he wants to follow us, he's going to have to go through them. There are fish. Meanwhile, radar is up. We're coming in here. We do pop the radar, get a little bit of intelligence. Eigel, hello. Low health, uh, basically no health. All we got to do is hit him once. Okay, that's the game plan. And we're hoping he doesn't have any buddies over here, because if he does, well, we only have just over half of our ship's health is going to be uh, difficult if we got multiple ships shooting at us we don't want to take two v1s we don't want to be going into 1v3s like that but situation is what it is uh we either concede the game or we go back here and challenge try and reset the base i don't typically like to concede games uh, unless i'm really crabby and my team's uh, throwing the game within the first two minutes then maybe i'll try and get out of it uh, by killing myself but dallas low here he's got about four or five thousand health we're forced to shoot Okay, we also know that the Eagle's uh, in the smoke cloud. Well, there he popped up on the map. Maybe he's not in the smoke. But we realize we're going to be getting shot 2v1. Nothing we can do about it. Nothing we can do about it. We don't have the time to be fooling around here. Uh, yes, we do have ships on their base, but those guys cannot capture the base to the north. They're going to continue to be shot at, reset, whatever. If we go down here, these guys automatically capture the base. You can see even the guys that have been pinging on our team defend the base, they don't turn around. They might be saying to themselves, okay, well, the god just got it. Yo, if you're going to rely on a destroyer to take on two cruisers and two destroyers uh, to keep your base cleared, you're going to lose 99% of the games that you employ that strategy with. Go back, defend the base. Well, meanwhile, we've got three kills now. Aoba coming around. Luckily, we did whack him with a couple of torps. Brought his health down a little bit. The guy should have shots at him, but they uh, decide to leave the area. Then they put these big islands in between uh, them and us. I don't know what the team thinks is going on here. This is the game. If you care about winning the game, you have to challenge these guys. All right. In Aoba with 4,000 health beats the Gajamata with 300 health 99 out of 100 times. All right. You do not rely on that play. Uh, you certainly don't rely on some random uh, who's we're now once again forced to fire at the Aoba. Why? Because he's going to spot us any second. He's coming around hot. All he's got to do is hit us. Holy God. Missed us there, and we're going to get one more shot off. Hopefully it gets them. And we're managing to actually take them down. And thank you, Michael, for subbing. Four kills. Base cleared. 
Look at the map. Both red ships are now to the north. Now that we've cleared the threat to our base, now we can fool around with sinking the enemy ships. We can fool around with potentially capping their base. But that comes after you defend your own base, okay? So if you start off on a flank, if we're on the west or on the east, clear your side, then go back and defend the base. Make sure that you're not going to lose a game, okay? You will lose capture the base mode games where you're up four, five, six ships. Because they got a guy on your base and everyone on your team is off on the other side of the map trying to fight it out, trying to slug fest with these guys. Got to defend the base first and foremost. So very instructive match here in terms of how to, the mentality you're going to need with capture the base. Okay, we got to be thinking about defending these bases. But once again, this is, this should not be uh, being shown to you right now. We should not be winning a fight against two destroyers and two cruisers. There's a lot of luck involved. There's a little bit of skill involved there and a little bit of misplay on the red team's part, yes, but a lot of luck, okay? And we don't want to rely on luck usually. Luck is a random element that we can't control, okay? So we want to be using better strategy uh, than conceding access to the enemy base. So hopefully we can see kind of how playing the wings, playing in the east, there's no strategic value over there, okay? Uh, if we What we want to do if we spawn on that east south side, we talk about this a lot, but... What you want to do basically there is slow down this push. You're expecting these uh, six ships to be coming towards you, and you're just going to have to kind of assume you're going to be kind of in a retreating position. Okay, and, but we want to slow them down, deal some damage, uh, prevent them from just charging into the base, because once again, we illustrated they got a sh much shorter path from the north into our base than the typical route uh, that we, the ships in the south take to the north. I mean, we took the direct route which, um, again, I don't normally go right for the base, but we just noticed that the door was open there. But usually, the ships that get on the base take the route that the guys up north took, which is all, they overwhelm the west, and then they take the long circuitous route there. Uh, we do get some shots on the North Carolina as we disappear, and we get them on the torp there. And what's this? Damage continues to go up. Main man's got a flood, and he can't, put a, he can't do anything about it. Damage control's already been used. And, by the way, look at this. We already got four kills. Maybe we'll get the fifth. Maybe we'll get the Kraken. Uh, the Kraken might be fine. You know, a lot of people like to get Krakens. I do, too. But this game, I thought... I'm proud of playing this game because of the defense. Okay, I, I usually try and defend the base the best I can. That's nothing new. But the fact that we could pull it out in those odds that were stacked so high against us, that's why I think this was a really well-played game. But, again, a lot of it was luck. You know, maybe they missed some shots or misplayed... Uh, uh, play here or there or whatever that we can't rely on that of course but anyway that's basically how you went on fault line and it's basically how you went on capture the base mode fault line play the middle control the middle project power outwards capture the base do whatever you're going to do for the first five minutes then go back to defend the base until that threat is removed and then go for the glory go for your krakens go for your damage after that but take the w's when you can get them because your teammates will try and prevent you uh, from getting them whenever we can. So that's going to do it for the look at the Gajamata for you guys. Hopefully you did enjoy it, and if you did, please hit the thumbs up. New to the channel, please consider subscribing. There's a lot of World of Warships coming all the time. Questions, comments, leave below. Love to hear from you guys, and we'll see you all later. Peace.